Can you put these lions in order of youngest to oldest? Youngest to oldest. Okay, let me try. I think, can I put this one over here? Okay, like that. Yeah, am I right? Okay, I think that the white one is the youngest, the yellow one is the middle, and the black one should be the oldest. Mm, you have one out of three right. One? Let me try again. Okay. Uh, let's swap these two. All right. All right now. You sure? 100%. Ding, 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 ding. You got it right. In Chinese Southern Lion Dance, the white lions are the oldest, the golden yellow lions are in the middle, and the black lions are the youngest. This just in from Snap News. 100-year-old lion dance troupe woos new blood. Hello, I am Jen. And I'm Amanda. Today, we're going to be talking about the lion dance. But first, mm. Jen, we'll go over a story about a 100-year-old lion dance troupe that's attracting new young members. Then, we will uncover some new vocabulary, learn a few grammar rules, and investigate the etymology of our word of the day. So, let's get started. Recently celebrating its 100th anniversary, the Singapore Hot Sun Association is the country's oldest lion dance troupe. Founded in 1920 by immigrants from Hishan in Guangdong Province, China, the troupe now has 50 members and five of them are under the age of 18. The troupe's two youngest members, 11-year-old Keith Cock and 10-year-old Ang Kai, were both introduced to lion dance through their fathers, who are themselves fans of the traditional art form and members of the troupe. Both of the boys were initially drawn to the exciting sounds of the drums, the cymbals and the gongs, percussion instruments that provide the rhythm, tempo and energy for every lion dance performance. Mr Ho Chin Hua, who oversees the lion dance troupe, said that every beginner must first become proficient in playing percussion instruments before learning any of the lion's moves or donning the costume. 14-year-old Jordan Cheng claims that, in addition to making new friends, joining the troupe has allowed him to learn more about Chinese culture. Traditionally, recruitment is done through friends and relatives. However, in order to reach a younger crowd, like you and I, the troupe has turned to social media where it uploads videos of its performances and training as well as information on upcoming events. Mr. Ang said that the troupe wants to attract quality members who will keep the tradition going. Having been around for a hundred years, the troupe intends to be around for a hundred more. Wow, I'd be lying <laughs> if I said I didn't think that was a cool story. Jen, very <laughs> funny. <laughs> Anyway, Jen, mm. I've been learning about hypernyms and hyponyms and how they help us categorize the relationship between words. A hypernym is a general word and is also known as an umbrella term or blanket term, right? Exactly. For example, dance is a hypernym because it encompasses multiple types of dances, not just one type. Ah, I see. So if I remember correctly, mm. a hyponym is kind of the reverse and are what we call the more specific terms related to hypernym? Yeah, exactly. Hyponyms are subtypes of the related hypernym. For example, salsa is a hyponym of dance because it's a type of dance. And a group of hyponyms that share the same hypernym are called co-hyponyms. For example, salsa, ballet and lion dance would all be called Co hyperims because they are all types of dance. A quick trick I learned to test to see if a word is a hyponym or a hyponym mm -hmm. is replacing X and Y in the frame X is a kind of Y okay. and seeing if the result makes sense at all. For example, a lion is a kind of big cat. Makes sense. But a big cat is a kind of lion. That, that doesn't make sense at all. No. Which means in this case, lion would be the hyponym and a big cat would be the hypernym. Well, that trick could come in handy because sometimes you might want to generalize something like big cats are carnivores, which makes sense because all big cats are carnivores. However, sometimes you'll need to be more specific, like big cats have stripes. 
that wouldn't work because only certain big cats like tigers have stripes. Exactly. So let's try another example using okay. the word instrument. Mm -hmm. So you could have a medical instrument like a scalpel or a stethoscope or you could have musical instruments mm -hmm. like string instruments or percussion instruments and so on. Okay, that's right. So if we keep going on with your musical instrument example, instrument would be the hypernym. Okay. Musical would be both a hypernym and hyponym. And string and percussion would be co-hyponyms. Yep, and if we just looked at percussion instruments, we would find so many different types. Drums, cymbals, xylophones, gongs, bells, and rattles are all percussion instruments. Yep, and if you look up the word drum, you will quickly find that it too has many hyponyms like bongo, tabla, and snare, and the list goes on and on. And on and <laughs> on. And you didn't even miss a beat. <laughs> So when two words are used together to make a new meaning, a compound is formed. However, there are three types of compounds and the challenging part about them is knowing what they mean, how to use them and how to spell them. Wait, so I've seen words like pick up being written all three ways, three ways. What's the difference? Ha, ah, let's start with open compound words. Okay. An open compound is two words that are commonly used together as one word. The modifying adjective is used with its noun to create a new noun, like in the open compound lion dance. Lion modifies the word dance. Oh. Sometimes, an open compound can actually be a phrasal verb and not a new noun. For example, when the word pick up is written as two separate words, mm -hmm. it means to pick something up like pick up your clothes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Would loud noises make my cat run away be an example of a phrasal mm -hmm. verb? Exactly, you got it right. Now, closed compound words are spelled as one word. Mm -hmm. At one point, these words weren't actually used mm -hmm. together, but they're now accepted as a real word in the English language. Closed compound words are usually made up of two words only. When pickup is written as one word, it is a noun or an adjective, not a phrasal verb. For example, you could have an impromptu round of pickup basketball or mm -hmm. drive a pickup truck. Mm, okay, so for example, although she was late, the groom was happy that she turned up. He was afraid she might have been a runaway bride. How dramatic! <laughs> but you are right, you are absolutely right. So in regards to our case study, the hyphenated compound pickup is a little glimpse of word evolution in action. Alright, so although pickup can still be found with a hyphen like in pickup sticks, it isn't necessary anymore? Exactly. Mm. The English language is always evolving and when words become used more frequently, mm -hmm. they are often eventually written as one word. Oh. When the internet first began, words mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. online, mm -hmm. email and login were all hyphenated. But now that it's a daily experience for most of us, mm -hmm. the versions without the hyphen have become commonly accepted. I see, but hyphenated compounds are still used regularly, right? Yes, they are. However, hyphenated compound words should only be used as adjectives to help describe a noun. A rule of thumb to remember is that in most cases, a compound adjective is only hyphenated if it comes before the noun it modifies, not after the noun. Wow, 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 look at that. I think it's safe to say that my information on compound words is now up to date. I'll see what you did there. That's really, really good. I am so ready for our word of the day. Are you? I am. Let's go. Let's do this. Our word of the day is troop. A troupe is a group of entertainers who tour to different venues such as dancers or actors. The word troupe surfaced in English in the early 19th century from the mid-16th century French word troupe, which is a back formation of troupeau, which means a group of people moving together or engaging in the same activity. Like a group of people in the military, or a group of dancers or actors? Mm-hmm, exactly. In French, troupe can sometimes be applied to a group of animals. For example, a herd of elephants is called, <clears throat> and let me get this right, une troupe d'éléphants. <laughs> <laughs> so, troupe is also a diminutive of the medieval Latin word, troupus, 
which means flock and is thought to be of Germanic origin. Very, very neat. very neat. You might have noticed the word troop is spelt the same and sounds similar in English and French. That's because troop is a loan word borrowed from French. It's not just English that does that. For example, the French language has adopted the English words selfie mm -hmm. and hashtag. <laughs> Some of the examples of loan words in the English language are coffee, borrowed from the French word café which also means coffee. Bazaar is loaned from the Persian word bazaar, which means market. Yep, and the word kindergarten, where children below primary age learn and play, is from the German word <coughs> kindergarten, mm. which literally means children's garden. Mm -hmm. That's actually pretty cool. I didn't yeah. know that. Neither did I. Oh, Jen, yep. are you ready to review? So ready. Oh, let's go. Today's art school was all about lion dance. Mm -hmm. We discussed a bunch of hyponyms and hyponyms. Remember, we looked at the words dance, mm -hmm. big cats, instrument, percussion, and drums? Jen, of course I do. I really super duper enjoyed our grammar lesson today. I finally know how to spot the difference and use closed, open, and hyphenated compound words correctly. And let's not forget our word of the day. Mm -hmm. Troop or <laughs> well, that's all for us today. Thank you for joining. Yep, we'll see you next time with a new piece of Snap, Snap News. news.